We're back in HDU. It was so exciting to get her out of here yesterday, though I was wondering if it was a little premature. And throughout the evening, and definitely overnight, she proved to me that being out of HDU was most definitely premature. So I'm going to turn the camera to Eileen and turn it around. There she is. So, we have just done some deep suctioning on her, and I don't know if you can hear her. That's how we see she is after chest physio and a deep suction and two really good coughs. So her aspiration pneumonia is still pretty bad actually. Numbers wise, let me move around and I can show you. Where it says 118, that is her pulse. Where it says 34 now, that is her respiratory rate, so that's a good respiratory rate. She's taking enough breaths. A little bit fast, but I have just done chest physio and moved her. 93 is her oxygen saturation, and she's not on any oxygen masks at all. And then 154 over 68 is her last blood pressure, and I have no idea if that is good or bad. Absolutely none. But yes, she is here. Most uh, medicines still go through the IV. So we have the line in her neck here. Here are, <laughs> here's the problem. Um, okay, so moving Ellen onto the normal pediatric ward yesterday was, as I say, a little on the premature side. And once up on the ward, she vomited quite a lot and she also spiked in temperature. And now she has been on a pretty darn serious broad spectrum antibiotics for five days, which is the full course of that. So really, that she's still spiking in temperature when the antibiotics should have done its work, really, really worries them. <laughs> so yes, <clears throat> you, madam, you worry the doctors. Yes, I had a lovely doctor come into her room at midnight and kind of going, we need to uh, get a cannula into her, we need to get a blood test, we need to do this, we need to do that, and I just went, no we don't. But she's, she has an infection, we have to get a urine sample, we have to... No we don't. Not tonight. We can do that tomorrow. We're not doing it tonight. Tonight we're going to do a heck of a lot of chest physio, and then she's hopefully going to go to sleep, and by the way, if somebody could come in here and give me some sleep, that'd be great. Because up on the paediatric ward, they don't do one-to-one. -one. And Eileen still requires constant one-to-one -one support. We have not been able to leave her even for a few seconds today. So twice today, I have tried to go to the loo because, you know, human being and I'm drinking, I'm keeping hydrated water. I'm drinking water, not gin. Wish it was gin, but it's water. Um, so occasionally I need to go to the loo. And basically every time I've done that, well, twice I've done that without somebody else in Eileen's room. And she's basically waited until I've sat down and thrown up and turned herself onto her back and then she's massive aspiration risk so this is what we don't like it is not good yeah so in the end she ended up having one-to-one -one support last night and i did manage to get some sleep at one point there were three nurses in Ellen's room and she was having the giggles and she was ma majorly pleased with the amount of attention she got so they had a party, and I was the boring friend asleep on the sofa in the corner. <laughs> I slept through that. Without wearing my earplugs, I actually slept through that. So, yeah, tired. Um, our other problem then is this cannula. So, if you've seen all the vlogs, you will know that this the cannula in her neck is meant to be a central line. So it's meant to go from here into central vessels in her chest. But what it has done, it has it snuck out into her arm instead so it's not a central line it has gone to being a, a sort of midline we can give medicines and IV drip through it but we cannot give total parental nutrition which is the nutrition drip and we are now a full week post-surgery it is 
No, we're eight days post-surgery. Her surgery was Wednesday last week. It is Thursday evening now. And yeah, so that's how long she's been like this. And yes, we've started giving her feeds. We're giving her Pediasure Compact and we're giving her some blender diet and she keeps throwing up. So she's not really getting enough calories and enough nutrition. When I say she's not really, not really, I mean she is most definitely not getting enough. She just isn't. It is not enough what she's getting in. So we are starting to be a little worried now nutrition-wise. And we also can no longer draw any blood from this cannula. So we cannot do a blood test on her. They had a good look today, the doctors and try to find somewhere to put in a peripheral cannula so you know just a normal box standard cannula they can't find a vein that they are willing to prick they say we might get a cannula in we might get it working but she'll break it within a day and that's not enough because she's still so dependent on iv medicines we give three medicines through the Mickey button now. We give baclofen, we give clobazam, and we give melatonin because those three we can't get IV. Everything else she has IV. And on top of that, on top of her normal day-to-day -day medicines, so she gets epilim and Keppra and omeprazole and... I feel like I'm missing one. Am I missing one? Uh, Silenar. Uh, okay, so through the IV goes Epilim and Keppra, they're both epilepsy meds. Omeprazole, which is a um, anti-reflux medicine. Silenar, which is one of her drivel medicines. They go through the IV and they are her normal day-to-day -day medicines. And then through her Mickey button we give Baclofen, which is a muscle relaxant. Melatonin, which is sleep. And Clobazam, which is a third rescue medicine, uh, well, no, a third epilepsy medicine and her first step rescue. And we're just giving that routine because if she starts fitting now, we're in trouble. Um, so we're giving that to hopefully keep her from going into a spiral of seizures. And then she also has IV on Dancitron, which is an antiemetic to help with the vomiting, and paracetamol and antibiotics. So she finished her five day course of one antibiotic and she's still clearly ill. She still clearly has aspiration pneumonia. She is still running temperatures. So they have put her on a new course of a different broad spectrum antibiotic. So yes, second one. In a way it's the third one. Well, they put her on coamoxiclav, which is like, you know, bogs down a penicillin kind of thing or antibiotic. Um, but after a day, they changed her to a, a stronger one. And that was based on what the microbiologists at hospital said, looking at her samples. Uh, so again, we've looked at samples and they've determined, because that course was over and they've determined another one to try. So that's what we've done. You are being, you're really moving. Haven't you? So she's very, very tired. But can you see that she's actually wriggling her legs? That leg that she is really moving there, that's her good leg. She has been moving her bad leg too, so this leg on top is the one that we've operated on. And also, God, she's tired. She can barely keep her eyes open. Yes, broad spectrum antibiotic. What next? Yes, the cannula. <clears throat> So we need to get a new cannula into her, but because they don't think that we can trust any of her veins for a peripheral cannula, we need to go in with a much deeper one, which would be either a pick line or another central line and a general anaesthetic. So we're putting her to sleep again tomorrow. Another GA. And that is going to put her several days back in her recovery because alien and GAs. Um, yeah, and in part that is because we now need to, we, we, we need to have the option of nutrition drip, but also this cannula has been in for eight days and they should only be in for five. So now this cannula in itself is an infection risk. 
and we can no longer draw bloods from it so it's blocked and it was a two two port cannula but um let me pause for a second moving out of the way so Ellie's nurse can do what she needs to do with the IV. Yes, um, two ports and one blocked several days ago and the other one still runs for things going in but we can't withdraw bloods from it and they want to do a blood sample and test everything they can test. So that's another reason for it is that we need to, yeah, so many reasons. A TPN, it, this one needs to come out anyway, we need to be able to draw bloods, um, we can't rely on her peripheral veins, doing anything deeper requires full sedation. Full sedation is going to knock her back several days, in which case she's most probably most definitely going to need TPN and she's going to be really, really bad again. So, <sighs> so I am not delighted that we're doing it, but I am also happy that we're doing it because it needs to be done. Um, but yes, I'm worried. Um, in terms of her being back in HDU, I am over the moon. I'm so pleased. She needs to be down here. Like, she's no longer critically ill. Her stalking is tomorrow. But, I mean, as of today, as of even yesterday, she's no longer critically ill. But she must have constant one-to-one -one supervision. And they don't have the resources to do that in the normal paediatric ward. Yeah, so... It sounds like bad news that we're back here, but it really isn't. Um, I think, yeah, the cannula situation, that is bad news, but it's the reality of it. And um, I'm going to stop blabbing hair and literally just post this without any editing. <laughs> and then I'm gonna try and get some sleep because this mama is tired, very tired. Uh, so many of you have sent us well wishes, so thank you. A lot of you have asked where is Alice. Alice is with her dad. So dad is looking after Alice while I'm here. And I'm doing the whole hospital stay with Eileen. And then when Eileen comes out of hospital, this is another question I've gotten from a lot of you, when Eileen comes out of hospital, she's going to her dad's to recover. So dad's going to look after her for the full post hospital recovery period and uh, he has not only her usual allocation of respite care but he has also been granted an additional package to pay for two overnight stays a week from carers so 12 hours overnight a carer staying in Ellen's room it would be sleeping overnight as in they'll be sleeping in Ellen's room but they're on hand for whenever she needs anything and also she is not leaving this hospital until we are absolutely certain it's safe and she's not going to bounce in, back, bounce back in. Because bouncing back in means Bedford Hospital and oh god. <sighs> like the nurses at Bedford Hospital are lovely and most of the doctors at Bedford Hospital are absolutely lovely. But they don't really know how to treat Ellen. Whereas this hospital, they're actually experts on complex children. So much, much, much happier to have her here. Yes, so there we are. Um, and I know I'm not responding to every single comment at the moment, but as you can see, I have my hands full and I very much have my mind full. So I just wanted to let you know, I read them all and I'm so grateful and you are all wonderful. And I am staying strong, I promise. I am coping, I promise. I am looking after myself very, very well, I promise. And then I have wonderful friends who also are looking after me and who are sending me takeaway deliveries. So yes, we are good. We're in the right place. And Eileen will get better. She's one heck of a fighter, but she does things on her own terms and on her own timeline. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye.